Hi, I'm David Ettinger. I'm going to talk about auction and the winner's cut. And we'll begin by introducing the concept of common value good. Usually, we assume that when a buyer takes part into an auction process for a good, he knows at least the value of the good for him. However, this is not always the case. We will show that this may have dramatic effects. We will consider a simple case in which potential buyers do not have a clear perception of the value of the good at the beginning of the auction, what is usually called a common value auction, in which all the bidders hold a different piece of information about the actual value of the good, which is the same for all of them. We'll illustrate this question with an example. Consider the following case. The United States are selling the right to extract oil in a specific area in the Gulf of Mexico. This area has not been exploited yet, and its exact value cannot be observed by any oil company. Actually, if we assume that all oil companies have access to the same technology, the actual value of these exploitation rights is the same for all the firms. It is the same but it is not known. However, oil companies can send their geological teams who will evaluate the volume of oil that can be extracted and the conditions of exploitation in this oil field. In order to, see, to simplify the analysis, let us consider this two-dimension representation. Here, we have the oil field that can be exploited. We can see it perfectly, but oil firms cannot. Each firm sends a team of geologists who can only make one sample, one carrot, in one location. We see that each firm sends his team in a different location in order to make the sample. The sample is a key information, and no firm will reveal the value of his sample to the other firm. Let us introduce some notations. There are n firms. Each firm has one sample. We assume that for firm I, for any value of I, if the quality of the oil field were everywhere the same as in the place where he has made his sample, the value of the oil field would be SI. We call this information firm I's private signal. However, there is no reason to assume that any firm has better information than another. Therefore, the best evaluation that we can have for the oil field is the average of all the signals of all the firms. We will denote this average V, which is equal to S1 plus S2 plus S3 and so on, plus Sn if you want at the end, and this divided by n. In order to simplify our analysis, we'll assume that the value of the oil field is precisely equal to this average. This is true if there are enough firms. Each oil company knows the value of his signal, and the real value is the average of all the signals. Now, in order to go further, we need to put ourselves in the head of the CFO of one of the oil company before he makes an offer. Let us say the CFO of firm one. He only knows his private information, S1, but he ignores the private information of the other firms. This is not enough to make an offer. Therefore, we need to add something, a probabilistic distribution of the private information. Even though the CFO does not know the private information of the other firms, he knows that the SI are uniformly distributed between 50 million and 150 million euros. This means, in, in probabilistic terms, that even though you do not know what is the value of the private signal of the other firms, you know that, you know that it can be anything between 50 million and 150 million with an equal probability for all the possible values, so that the average value is 100 million euros. Therefore, assume, for instance, that there are four firms competing. Firm one obtained the signal 80 million euro. Then its CFO considered that the expected value 
of the exploitation right is 80 plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 divided by 4 equals 95 million euros. So the 80 is his private signal, and the 100 is the expected value of the other firm signal. Suppose that the exploitation rights are sold through a second price auction. All the bidders write a bid on a piece of paper. They put it in an envelope and give it to the seller, who will sell the exploitation right to the firm who makes the highest offer for a price equal to the second highest offer. We have shown in a joint video that in a standard case, when buyers know their valuation for the good, choosing a bid equal to this value is the best possible strategy. Therefore, it seems reasonable to do the same here. What is the expected value of the object for sale for firm I with signal SI? It's SI plus 100 plus 100 plus 100 divided by 4 million euros, the average. It is equal to SI divided by 4 plus 75 million euros. So let's assume that firms bid SI divided by 4 plus 74, 75 million euros and see what happens. Suppose that S1 is equal to 80 million. Then firm 1 will submit 80 divided by 4 plus 75 equal 95 million euros. Consider the case when firm 1 wins. Since all firms submit SI divided by 4 plus 75 million euros, which is increasing in SI, this means that firm 1 has the highest signal. We explain why firm 1 wins. Now, what is firm 1 profit? We don't know, because we don't know the signal of the other firm. But we can find at least an upper bound on his profit. Since S1 is the highest signal, this means that S2, S3, and S4 are lower than 80 million, so that at most, the average of S1, S2, S3, and S4 is equal to 80 million euros. V is at most equal to 80 million euros. What about the price paid by firm 1? We consider the lowest possible price paid. The price paid is the lowest when all the other firms have the lowest possible signal since the price will be equal to the second highest bid. With a signal 50 million, a firm submit 50 divided by 4 plus 75 million, equal to 87.5 million euros. The lowest possible price is 87.5 million euros. This means that if firm 1 wins the auction, an upper bound on its profit is a loss of 87.5 minus 80 million euros. 87.5 million being the lowest possible price he may pay, and 80 is the highest possible value for the good. So he will lose at least 7.5 million euros, and in fact, even more. This is precisely what we call the winner's curse. The winners of the auction is eventually a loser in profit terms. Strange, isn't it? What happens? When a bidder has a signal 80, the expected value of the oil field is 95 million euros. This is true. No mathematical trick. Therefore, it's a bit 95 million euros. And when he wins the auction, he loses a huge amount of money. Where is the problem? As a matter of fact, when firm one receives a signal 80 million euros, his expected value for the oil field is 95 million euros. But if he wins the auction, this also means something. This means that he has received the highest signal that all the other buyers received a less favorable signal. If bidder 1 wins the auction, it means that S2, S3, and S4 are all lower than 80 million, between 50 million and 80 million. If firm 1 wins, S2 cannot be equal to 120 million, for instance. But firm 1 bids 95 million euros. He does not take into account the fact that if he wins, he has the highest signal, and that the average value of all the signal cannot be higher than 80 million euros, since all firms have a signal lower or equal to 80 million euros. When firm 1 bids in the auction, he only cares about the outcome of the auction if he wins. Otherwise, it is not his problem. Now, conditional winning 
the expected value of the oil field is no longer S1 divided by 4 plus 75, but rather S1 divided by 4 plus 65 plus 65 plus 65 divided by 4 equal to 68.75. What is this 65? 65 is the expected value of S2, S3, and S4 conditional on being lower than 80. So if S1 is equal to 80 and he wins the auction, he knows that the other bidders they have a value between 50 and 80, and the average value between 50 and 80 is 75. Therefore, what firm one should do is precisely to bid an expected value of the oil field conditional on winning the auction. In that case, he won't suffer anymore from the winner's curse. Now, a question is, do we believe that bidders in auction suffer from the winner's curse or not? The general view is the following. When bidders are experienced, they do discover the problem of the winner's curse and bid rightly, taking into account the elements that we mentioned and submitting lower bids. Eventually, they do not suffer from the winner's curse. But in the short term, for unexperienced bidder, you may need a lot of auctions to become experienced. It is reasonable to assume that they will indeed suffer from the winner's curse and lose money. We have many real-life examples illustrating this issue. For instance, let's consider a football game. We have an experienced bidder. The unexperienced bidder as a president of the football team. It's somehow a new market, the auction for players. If you consider what was the market 20 years ago, it's new now. So this unexperienced bidder, they bid for football player which, has, which are somehow common value goods. The value of a player is the same for all the team. But who is going to win the auction? Who will make the more attractive offer to the player? The most optimistic one, not taking into account the elements that we mentioned, which may explain why we have so many teams who lose money because they pay too high a price for the footballers.